thankful that God has blessed us with this privilege to worship him once again and to come together in fellowship to encourage one another in our walk. So good to have all of you who are tuned in this morning. It is our prayer that you have made the preparations to worship God this morning, giving him glory and giving him honor. We're always appreciative to those who lead us in our worship. Our song leader, Brother Woods, beautiful job. Those who read our scripture and those who have led us in the communion of our Lord. We are so blessed that God has given us this privilege to fellowship with him, but most of all, to bring glory and honor to his great name on this day. Sister Gibbs and I would like to express our appreciation to our children and those who help them to organize a celebration of our birthdays. My wife's birthday was on the 24th, which was last Lord's Day. Mine is the 27th. We're both the same age. And so if hers was on the 24th and mine was on the 27th, she's the older of the two. <laughs> but uh, wisdom comes with age and so I am who I am because of the wisdom that God gave her those three days before I came into this world and so we're just thankful I really appreciate uh, the celebration and the extended uh, support and love from the congregation they had uh, I heard they wanted 70 cars for 70 years and uh, we just thank all of you who took the time to come and to uh, acknowledge our birthday and to celebrate with us. The love and the support continues to mean so much to us, uh, even to this very day. I want to call your attention to a passage of scripture uh, that was read in your hearing, which is Acts chapter one, verses one through four. There's a principle in this text that I want to lift today for our subject. It's not always apparent, and so I'm hoping that as I lift this principle and speak to it, that it will bring even more meaning and clarity to what is going on at the time of the reading and uh, what events take place. Uh, during this particular time that Luke shares with us. Read with me. Acts 1 verse 4, The former treatise have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach until the day in which he was taken up. After that he threw the Holy Ghost, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Here's the principle. And being assembled together with them, I want to underscore that, being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. Here's the subject, the power of togetherness, the power of togetherness. We're living in a world of a lot of alienation, estrangement, division, and separation. I just believe that if 
we knew and understood how powerful togetherness is, you and I would work very diligently and very hard to maintain what this really means to be together. When you talk about togetherness, it simply means that a group of people, a company of people must come together. And as they come together, they come together in the same place at the same time. Togetherness recognizes a place. Togetherness recognizes a time. When you talk about togetherness, it also carries the idea of being close to one another. If it's really what it ought to be, there is a happy feeling of affection that is there, a closeness of the people who have gathered together. I believe families need to reemphasize togetherness. I believe that our country needs to refocus on togetherness. I believe that a church will never be what it ought to be unless we truly understand what it means to be together. Every aspect of life depends on togetherness. For it unites us. It brings security, support, and yes, a sense of belonging. I want you to understand my lesson this morning is the power of togetherness. The power of togetherness. Why do I say that there is a power? Because power means capacity. Why do I say power? Because it means ability. Power means potential. Power means force. If people really are together, there's a force that is exemplified. Potential is seen. Ability is underscored. Yes, and it broadens our capacity. In Acts chapter 1 and Acts chapter 2, at least 12 times, either directly or indirectly, the togetherness of the apostles and the church is highlighted. In the text that we just read, Jesus, having been with the apostles for 40 days after his resurrection, then them seeing him and being with him those 40 days, he assembles, the Bible says, together with them. It's important that we see this as the inauguration the beginning of the inauguration of the church. The church could not have been inaugurated or commenced without the power of togetherness. And so it is exemplified, even right here, Jesus assembled them together. They had to come together at this place. They had to come together at this time that they might witness, number one, the hearing of the commandments for the kingdom that is to be established, but that they might witness his ascension going back to glory. When you look at verse number 12 of chapter 1, the Bible says, and I want you to follow me on the screen, in chapter, 12, in chapter 1 and verse number 12, it says, Then returned they... And I underscore they unto Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet. This is after his ascension, which is from Jerusalem a Sabbath day's journey. And when they were come in, they went up into an upper room, a place, where abode both Peter, James, John, Andrew, Philip, 
Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, Simon Zelotes, Judas, the brother of James. These all, watch the Bible, these all continued with one accord in prayer, supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. Notice the word one accord. One accord is a very unique word which is used at least 10 times in the book of Acts. And it helps us to underscore the uniqueness of the Christian community. I want to say that again. The uniqueness of the Christian community is found in this word one accord. Well, what does one accord simply mean? It means harmony. When you go to uh, a concert and there are many um, instruments that are in the band, they may be all different instruments, but they're in one accord. You know why? Because when they play, they play to the harmony and they make harmony. They make a sound that is beautiful, one that is able to communicate. So it's one thing to be together, but it's a whole nother idea when those who are together are in one accord. That's because those who are together, they are of the same mind and they are the same judgment and they are tending to the same things. When you consider the fact that these all continue with one accord in prayer and supplication. This is on the eve of the inauguration of the church. So why do I say that it's important and there's a power in togetherness? It's because if these apostles had not stayed together, if these apostles had not continued together, then God would not have been able to bring out the capacity, bring out the importance and the fulfillment of the kingdom of God Almighty. Well, when you look further, go with me to verse 20 of Acts chapter 1. Verse number 20, I want you to read this with me. For it is written, this is after they have come uh, back together. This is what Peter says to them. For it is written in the book of Psalm, let his habitation be desolate and let no man dwell therein and his bishopric let another take. Wherefore these men which have watched the word companied with us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us beginning from the baptism of John until that same day that he was taken up from us must one be ordained to be a witness with us of his resurrection and they appointed to Joseph called Barsabas whose surname was Justice and Matthias Judas was and they prayed let me go to verse 24 and they prayed and said thou Lord which knoweth the hearts of all men show whether of these two thou hast chosen that he may take part of this ministry and apostleship from which Judas by transgression fell, that he might go to his own place. And they gave forth their lots, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was numbered with the eleven. Here again, you have to see that the apostleship was a group of men that God, Christ, had chosen to be the ones to inaugurate the kingdom of God. These men were specially chosen to be witnesses of the resurrection, witnesses of his message, witnesses of his life. And so for one to qualify, he had to be in the group. He had to be one who had accompanied them, who had been together with them. You can't reach out and get someone outside of the group. He has to be somebody who was part of the experience. And so when I consider 
the power of togetherness. Luke, Luke understands as he writes that the reader who is Theophilus must understand that these 11 men at this time stayed together. Must understand that when, when Judas fell, that it was important that they add another to that company, that 12 apostles. And so the lot fell on Matthias, and he was numbered with the 11. Now I want you to go with me to chapter 2, and I want you to see again how togetherness is, is the foundation of the inauguration. The Bible says in chapter 2, verse number 1, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with what? All with what? One accord. Now, I know they were together, but they were all together with what? One accord. In other words, they were of the same mind and of the same purpose. They were in tune to one another. One accord in how many places? One place. You can't have togetherness unless you are together in a place. That place either has to be physically or it has to be one that all of us understand is necessary for us to have the togetherness. Now watch this now. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all of the house where they were sitting. All of these apostles. Now I want you to watch this. And I want you to see something else. In verse number 42. You know the story. After Peter had preached the sermon. The church, ladies and gentlemen, was established through the baptism of those who were recipients of the message. But watch verse number 42. And all I want to do is emphasize togetherness. Now watch the church. I know what the apostles did. Now I want you to see the church and togetherness. The Bible says in verse number 42, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. They continued how? Steadfastly. Watch, watch that now. He said they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. What they are, is he talking about? He's talking about those who have been baptized. The doctrine, fellowship, breaking of bread and in prayers, and fear came upon every soul. And many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were what? Come on now. All that believed were what? Together. Now, if you're watching the screen, you ought to be able to read that. All that believed were what? Together. And had how many things common? All things common sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. And they, watch this now, continuing daily with what? One accord. There it is again. One accord. They're not just together. They're together in mind and in soul. In harmony with one another. The Bible said in one accord, in the temple, breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having faith with all the people. And the Lord did what? Added. I got to stay with that. Added. In other words, there's also already something existing. And so when a man is saved, the Lord does what? He adds them to that which is existing. He adds them to those that are already together. He adds to them adds to them those that have already been a part of this believing community. So when a man is saved today, when a man is baptized, that man must understand that there is a certain togetherness that comes with your conversion. You have to be in the company of the people that have believed and obeyed as you have obeyed. Daily, such as should be saved. Well, I want to move I, I've seen it in the inauguration of the church. But I want to show you that the power of togetherness is also in the witness of the church. In the witness of the church. Now when I say the witness, I'm talking about endorsement. The endorsement of the message. Are you following me? All right, now, 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 now you're not a witness if you can't endorse. And if your endorsement is not authentic... Come on now, it's got to be authentic. 
Everybody can't believe a lie. When you together, be together on the truth. Be together on what really happened. Corroborate one another. Did you see it? Yes. Did you understand it that way? Yes. Without corroboration, without authenticity, without endorsement, the kingdom never would have been able to flourish as it did. I need a witness. Jesus says, I need you men to stay together so you can be witnesses. Now I want you to watch what he says in Acts chapter 1 verse number 8. And I know I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to move hurriedly. But watch the Bible in verse number 8. Acts chapter 1 verse number 8. I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with witness now. The witness of the church through togetherness. In verse number 8 he said, and you shall receive power. This is Jesus speaking to the 12. This is before his ascension. Ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea, Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Now go with me to Acts chapter 2 and verse number 14. And I want you to notice how togetherness underscores and underpins this great witness. In verse number 14 of Acts chapter 2, the Bible said, But Peter, standing up, standing up with the eleven. That's what I'm, I, I got to show you. He stood up with the eleven. What I'm about to talk about, the eleven are right here to corroborate it. What I'm about to talk about, every one of these men would say the same thing. He stood up with the eleven lifted up his voice and said unto them, ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell in Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken unto my words. I'm a witness. And all of us, all 12 of us are witnesses. Eyewitnesses to his resurrection. Eyewitnesses to his commandments. Eyewitnesses to his ascension. Eyewitnesses to his life witnesses to everything from John who baptized him in Jordan all the way to his ascension we got the same testimony he is the Christ the son of the living God well I want you to see it now with the church I want to show you how the witness is not just among the apostles but it's also with the church go with me to Acts chapter 4 and verse number 23 Acts chapter 4 and verse number 23 The Bible says, and being let go. Now, this is after the apostles have witnessed and they have been put in jail. Now, I, can't, I don't have time to keep the chronology of it together, but I'm emphasizing how togetherness is important. But watch this in Acts chapter 4 and verse number 23. And being let go, they went to their own what? Come on now, say it with me. They went to their what? I wonder why did they go to their own company? <laughs> you know why? Is because there was a sense of belonging. There was security. They knew that when I'm in trouble, I gotta go where there's security, I gotta go where I know I belong. Everybody ought to have a company. Everybody ought to know that there's some place I can go. Now watch this. I don't want to preach too much. But I want you to watch this. And when they heard that, when they heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with what? Say it again. Well, why am I going to this company? I'm going to this company because this company is going to do what? Lift up his voice in harmony. I don't, I don't know how to make it any clearer how important togetherness is. When there's harmony. Sister Gibbs and I can be riding along and we're together. But every now and then I'll reach over and say, baby, what you thinking about? You know why I want to know what she's thinking about? I want to know more than the fact that she's just in the car with me. Or in the house with me. I want to know, is there harmony between us? 
Só a moesca. I need her right here with me. Well, I got, I'm getting off the subject, but, but there's power in togetherness. They lifted up their voice in one accord, but I want to show you the witness. Hurry, Brother Gibbs. Thou art God, which hath made heaven and earth and the sea, and all that is that in them is, who by the mouth of my servant David has said. Why did the heathen rage and the people imagine vain things? The kings of the earth stood up, and the rulers, watch this, were what? Are y'all following me? Is it on the screen? Now watch this. The kings of the earth stood up, and the rulers were what? Gathered, gathered what? Gathered. But they were gathered against, against what? The Lord. See? It can be a whole lot of folk getting together, but the question is, are you for the Lord, or are you against the Lord? And then the Bible says, drop down to verse number 31. This is, this is, the, this is, this is where I really want you to see. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken. Where they were assembled, where they were assembled, what? Together. <laughs> hmm? And they were all what? Filled with the what? And they did what? Spank, hold it. They what? They spank, that's witness. They all what? Spank. The word of God with what? Boldness. Drop down to verse number 33. And with great what? Power gave the apostles what? Witness of the resurrection and of the Lord Jesus Christ. And great grace was upon them what? All. Without them being together. The apostles never would have gotten the the Christian fellowship to be together. If the leaders are not together, somebody ought to preach with me this morning. If the leaders can't be together, if the leaders can't be in harmony, how in the world do you expect the church to follow? Oh, that's some good preaching right there. You know, that's why, well, I'm, 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 I'm deviating, but it's a principle. And I'm talking about the principle, the principle that I know is important is that people need to understand how important it is to be together. They haven't gotten that message in Washington yet. And that's why our country is, is in the shape that it's in. It's because no one understands. Policy is one thing, but togetherness is far more important than policy. If you can't be together, you, you, you. I want to stay out of politics. Let me move move my last point is this if you can understand togetherness was important when it came to the inauguration of the church and the witness of the church then I want to show you the power of togetherness in the growth of the church see when I say, when I say growth I'm talking about progress I'm talking about advancement. I'm talking about development. I'm talking about expansion. The Lord knows I can't expand this thing from Jerusalem without togetherness. I cannot, I cannot develop this great kingdom and make progress without them being together. And that's why in Acts chapter 2 verse number 14, Peter stood up with the 11. Acts 2 40. And I'm in Acts 2.40, the Bible said, And with many other words did he testify in his all saying, Save yourself from this untoward generation. Then they that gladly received the word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Why is Luke putting emphasis on how many were baptized? Because he wants, them, wants you to understand that because of the witness of the message, 3,000 people were added on that day. That's, that's, that's powerful to know that the witness that is being shared among all who witnessed 3,000, Acts 4 and verse number 4. How be it when many of them, Acts 4, 4, 
How be when many of them which heard the word believed, and the number of the men was about 5,000. So if it was 5,000 men, you can guarantee at least 15,000 people were there. So what is the church doing? It's growing. What is it doing? It's expanding. Acts chapter 14. And the believers were the more added to the body. Multitudes both of men and women. Isn't that interesting? How, 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 just because people are together, a thing will grow, a thing will expand. Let me tell you, let me tell you, be honest with yourselves and be honest here this morning. If we as a church do not stay together, we will not develop. We will not expand. We will not grow. Verse, Acts chapter 6 and verse number 7. And the word of God increased. Watch this. Acts 6, 7. And the word of God increased. And the number of the disciples were what? They were what? Multiplied in Jerusalem. How? How? And it was so wonderful in the growth that a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. They left Judaism and came into Christianity. That is, I, if, 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 if they had not been together with their, with, their, with their own bodily presence and with their witness of the message, they would not have had the impact on Jerusalem, nor with the world. So in conclusion, Jesus is the power source to achieve this fellowship. One must achieve it through a relationship with Christ. He is the common denominator. The scriptures illustrate how passionate God is about togetherness. I'm going to say that again. The scriptures illustrate how passionate God is about togetherness. About breaking down barriers and walls of hostility. Separation between us should never exist if we have given ourselves to Christ. We should go to great lengths to bring people together. Amen. Amen. Ephesians 2 and 14 through 18. I want you to just listen to this pa passage. For he is our peace, and I'm talking about Christ, who hath made both one, hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the in, enmity, even the law of commandments contained in order for the making himself of twain, one new man, so making peace, so that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. Well, that's what Jesus came to do. He came to bring people together. He came to bring Jews and Gentiles together. He came to bring all families of the earth together. And then when you come to Revelations 21, the Bible said, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them. That's why we got to stay together here, because if you can't get it together here, how are you going to dwell with him up there? Well, I have learned this principle from my study and I'm excited about it I've always used it as the North Star of my ministry and of my family you've got to stay together <laughs> man one time a woman was drowning man saw it saw her drowning and so he jumped in to try to save her and he reached for her head and a wig came off <laughs> he reached in her mouth and her teeth came out and then he reached for her 
a leg and a leg came off. He said, baby, if you want me to save you, you're going to have to stay together. <laughs> and so the point that I'm making to you is that I've learned, I have learned, buildings don't matter. Mm -mm. Not a building, not the latest equipment, not the latest marketing strategy, not even a large crowd in an assembly. If togetherness is not there, it doesn't measure up to anything. The African proverb is right. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Henry Ford said this, coming together is a beginning. Keeping together is progress. Working together is success. Where did Henry Ford get that from? God. Where did the African proverb come from? God. Even Babe Ruth understood how important togetherness was. He said, you may have the greatest bunch of individual stars in the world, but if they don't play together, the club won't be worth a dime. Now that's Babe Ruth. Now I, I gave you Jesus. And then I gave you some other witnesses, Babe Ruth, Henry Ford, and the African proverb. But they all testify to the same thing. Without togetherness, being in one accord, there is no success. So togetherness is about the heart, not habit. Togetherness is about love, not location. Togetherness is about conviction, not convenience. Togetherness is about vulnerability, not just visual, visual presence. So I beg of us, as we start this new year, let us see how valuable togetherness is. Oh, there are many words that I could have used, but I wanted to use the word togetherness. Someone say, well, why don't you say unity? Well, you'll miss it. But you ain't gonna miss togetherness because that means we got to come together. Somebody may want to experience this in Christ. You do that by hearing the gospel, believing the gospel, repenting of your sin and confessing Christ to be the son of God, buried with him in the water of grave of baptism, which is for the remission of sin. You have to leave the old self, put on the new self, having your mind renewed in Christ, understanding how important it is to be together with Christ and be together with his people, working together and seeing what God would do. You hear that gospel without faith, without Faith, no one can save, be saved. Without faith, no one can be saved. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. No one can be saved without repentance. Jesus said, I tell you, neighbor, but except you repent, you're going to perish. No one can be saved without confessing him. He said, if you confess me before men, I'll confess you before my father. No one will be saved or in this fellowship without baptism. Baptism is for the remission of sin, Acts 2, 38. Puts us into Christ, Romans 6 and 3. You do that, work hard, together. One day we'll see God to, in heaven where we'll all be together with him. May God bless you and may God keep you. Thank you. We're